Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today we're going to talk about metric conversions. We're going to do a brief review of the metric system in general, and then we're going to talk about how to convert from one unit to another within the metric system. So the first thing you need to remember is that the metric system is based on 10. 1 times 10, 10 times 10, 100 times 10, but the bottom line is it's based on 10. The system we currently, currently use in the United States isn't based on 10. In fact, it's not really based on any one number. If you take an inch and you look on a ruler and you look at the small divisions for a ruler, you'll either find that an inch is based on 8 or 16 individual pieces. And if you take a foot, you'll see that it's broken down into 12 individual units we call inches. Next bigger than a foot is a yard. And that's broken down into either three pieces, three feet, or 36 pieces, 36 inches. But it's not based on anything nice and same like the metric system is based on series of tens. The metric system really doesn't involve any fractions. You may see it as 1 over 10, but to me that's 0.1 or 1 tenth. You may see something says 1 over 100 but to me that's one one hundredth. The metric system is always used, also used by people throughout the world. We're one of three countries that does not use the metric system and frankly I think it's much easier to use the metric system than the system we use currently. The metric system is made up of a series of prefixes and root words and the prefixes are pretty easy to remember if you remember this mnemonic device or this memory assistive device. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. Now I don't know why it works for other people but I and I don't know why it works for me but I can tell you this from the time I was a child I found that using mnemonic devices helped me tremendously remember things that otherwise would have just been random bits and pieces of information or letters. For some reason when I was when I was younger I had a hard time remembering how to spell the word geography. No matter what I did, I just really struggled with how to spell that word until I realized there was a delightful mnemonic device or memory assistive device that I could use. And that statement was, George E's old grandfather rode a pony home yesterday. Now why I could remember that sentence and not the individual letters, I don't know. But it helped me a lot. And hopefully this mnemonic device will help you too. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk. There's other mnemonic devices that you can use for the metric prefixes. And if you know of one that you use that works for you, please share it in the comment section under this video. Because if it works for you, it will probably help somebody else. And I may even like it more than my chocolate milk mnemonic device. So when you're converting from one metric unit to the other, the first thing that you want to do is draw a horizontal line. Just draw a line it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't even have to be straight. It just needs to be there. And on the horizontal line you're going to put seven tick marks. Kind of like seven days of the week. That's how I remember how many to put. Now you'll notice that I make the one in the middle, the fourth one, larger. You don't have to. I do. But that's totally up to you as to whether you want to make that a larger line or not. Then, above each of the individual tick marks, you write the abbreviations for the mnemonic. K for King. H for Henry, D for died, U for unexpectedly, D for drinking, C for chocolate, and M for milk. Underneath the U, I put these letters to help me remember what my root words are for the metric system. You don't have to put those if you don't want to. It just helps me. So what do those letters stand for? Well, M is the abbreviation for meter. And sometimes it's spelled with an ER at the end, and sometimes it's spelled with an RE. In the United States, we use the ER spelling. And a meter is the standard measure for length. It's a little bigger than a, uh, than a yard. A little bigger than a yard. But it's the measurement of length, M. L, and it's uppercase L, not lowercase L. It looks like a capital L. That's the abbreviation for leader. Again, there's two spellings of it. We prefer the ER spelling of leader. Leader is the standard measure for volume. 
you probably already know that because you uh, drink pop from a two liter bottle so you're familiar with the um, with the unit liter and the fact that it's volume G is the abbreviation for gram and gram is the root word or the base word for the SI unit for mass but it's not what the standard is based on a gram weighs uh, a paper clip weighs about a gram a nickel which is five cents weighs about five grams that's an easy way to remember what a gram is, is. however kilogram is the standard measure for mass not the gram gram is simply the base word kilogram is a measure for mass not for weight there's a difference and in the metric system we specify mass probably more frequently than we specify weight so what do the prefixes mean K remember we said King here's our letters King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk K is for kilo and kilo is the same thing as saying a thousand if I said I had a kilo of pizzas I would have a thousand pizzas if I said I had a kilo of students I would have a thousand students kilo dollars a thousand dollars kilo means a thousand and it's used quite a bit H is for hecto hecto stands for 100 we don't use that on a fairly regular basis but you need to know that hecto is the prefix that means 100 deca can be spelled two ways DECA or DEKA and that means 10 and I find that pretty easy to remember because a decade is 10 years DEC DECA is 10 the abbreviation for DECA is either DK or DA both mean DECA hecto the abbreviation is H kilo the abbreviation is K U is for unit that's where you have your root word so it would be meter, liter, or gram. Deci, with an I at the end, means one-tenth. Centi, with an I at the end, is one one-hundredth. That one's also pretty easy for me to remember because I think about the word cent in the word centi, and I realize there's a hundred cents in a dollar, or one cent is one one-hundredth of a dollar. And milli is one one-thousandth. Now, the way I remember that these are the smaller units is because they all end in I. So does the word mini. Mini ends in the letter I, and these end in I, and min mini to me is small, and these are small. So that's how I remember they're less than one. So here's my metric slider. King Henry died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk with the meter, the liter, and the gram. Again, to put these together, KM would be kilometer, HL would be hectoliter, DA or DKG would be decagram, deciliter, centiliter, and milliliter. So how do you use the metric slider? First of all, you're going to start with a number. You're always going to be given a number, like how many centimeters are in 127 millimeters sometimes the decimal is showing when you're giving that given that information and sometimes it's not if it's not showing you can go ahead and put a decimal to the right of the last number it's there it's invisible but when you're using the metric slider you need to make it visible then you're going to add some extra zeros you're going to add some extra zeros before the number you're going to add some extra zeros after the number and that's so that when you're using your metric slider you have some room to work. Then you're going to look at the unit for the known quantity in your problem. So if you're going from centimeters to millimeters, the known quantity is centimeters. 127 centimeters. You're going to put your pointer on centi. Then you're going to move to the new unit. In this case we're moving from centi to milli. And we're going to count both the number of jumps and the direction that we go. We're going to pay attention to the direction we go and count the number of jumps. And then we're going to move our decimal in the original number, the same number of spaces, and in the same direction as we moved our pointer on the metric slider. 
So let's do an example. How many millimeters are in 57 centimeters? So the number we're starting out with is 57. We're going from centimeters to millimeters. So we're going to write the 57. We're going to show the decimal. We're going to add extra zeros. Use our slider to put the pointer on the first unit, the starting unit, in this case centi, and count the number of jumps and notice the direction needed to get to milli. So here's what it looks like. 57 centimeters, there's my decimal, my extra zeros to the right, it's still 57. Now if you know significant figures, you know we've changed the significant figures, but we haven't changed the value of the 57. Add some more zeros, Eventually you'll realize that you only need to add zeros either at the end of a number or at the beginning of a number, but when you're first starting out it's just good technique to add them in both. There's my metric slider. I'm going to start at centi and move to milli, so I'm moving one jump to the right. If I add this and move one jump to the right, my decimal goes from after the seven to after the zero, so 57 centimeters is 570 millimeters. Let's do another example. 14.92 liters is how many kiloliters? What are you going to do first to solve this problem? Pause the tape now and talk to someone around you or write down what your first step is going to be to solve this problem. Hopefully you did pause the tape because you're going to use your slider to find out the answer. And there's a slider. We're going to start on liters. Now if you'll notice none of these says L. Liter went under our units or our root word column. We're going to go from liters to kilo. So let's count. One, two, three to the left. And indeed three jumps to the left one four point nine two liters becomes point zero one four nine two kiloliters. Ready for another one? Here we go. Next example, seven thousand two hundred and fifty centiliters is how many kiloliters? Pause the video now. You can use your metric slider. Talk to someone that's around you and see if you can figure out the conversion. I'm sure you did great using your metric converter. So we're going from centi to kilo. Centi is right here. Kilo is right here. Let's count one, two, three, four, five jumps to the left. Five jumps to the left. We're going to move our decimal in the original number, the same number of spaces and the same direction that we moved the slider. So let's give it a try. One, two, three, four, five jumps to the left. We added these two zeros here as placeholders. We don't really need this first one, but sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to read. So 7,250 centiliters is .07250 kiloliters. Here's some independent practice for you. 45,000 grams is how many milligrams? Once you stop the video now, use your metric slider and figure out the answer to that one. 45,000 grams is 45 million milligrams. Three jumps to the right. I'm sure you did that right. Here's some more for you to practice on your own. Let me know if you have any trouble with them.